What's up guys, it is Josh back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over how you can create the perfect intro. I'm gonna be going over some tips and tricks that you can easily implement into your own intros to just add to the overall quality as well as the flow. But if you guys enjoy the video and you wanna see more like this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on my PC. All right guys, so I actually am inside of DaVinci Resolve 17, which is gonna be the software I'm going to be covering this tutorial inside of. If you wanna download it, I'll have a link to it in the first link in the description. It's 100% free it's a great software for you guys to actually get into but you will be able to kind of implement these general effects in any other editing software just by kind of following along with the tips and tricks that i provide so all we got to do once we have davinci resolve open is go into a new project maybe make it intro sample tutorial or something like that and i'm going to press create and then once i've actually done that i'm going to go to the edit tab go up here to file go to project settings and then change our frame rate to 60 and make sure that our quality is at 1920 by 1080 which is the industry standard nowadays make sure to just save your changes and all you want to do now is navigate on over to wherever you have your intro uh, footage. I'm going to use the intro that we actually did for this video. So I'm going to drag it in right here. Sorry for the audio quality if it's a bit off. Um, this is going to be using my camera audio versus the audio of my microphone itself. I record inside of Streamlabs OBS and then I'll overlap the two. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cut out any mistakes that you have in your intro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out and I'll see you guys once I've done that. All right, guys, so I have my chopped up intro right here. It pretty much just consists of, I mean, you've already watched it in the intro itself, which is kind of trippy to think about. We're editing this intro of this video inside of the video on how to edit intros. Let me know if that makes sense. But right here, I have the intro to the video itself, kind of an intro to me saying, hey, what's up? It's Josh. Introduce yourself. Introduce the topic of the video. And then I kind of move into specifically what I'm going to be going over, but in a general sense. So I'm going to be, you know, I highlight that I'm going over tips and tricks, and that's pretty much what the video is going to be about inside of the actual tutorial and then i'll do a little call to action at the very end where i just kind of suggest a subscription if my viewers enjoy the video and uh, yeah that's pretty much the three main parts that i always do in my intros i would recommend shooting from anywhere to 10 to 20 seconds because that is kind of a typical intro range i feel like and i feel like anything past that will kind of cause viewer engagement to dip down so i'd kind of keep it as short as possible even if you could get it below 10 seconds that would be awesome covering everything that i mentioned so the first thing that i always do do is I will fade in my intro at the beginning that way it's not super choppy and then once I've actually found the perfect duration for this fade in what I'll do is I'll focus on making sure that the intro flows well so I'll check my transition points what I do is I normally overlap the audio that way it doesn't have any pauses or breaks between it and it keeps the viewer engaged and they have something to listen to the entire time so a tip for this would be to overlap the ending and beginning syllables of each part of a word um, it's hard to explain but once you get the hang of it it really becomes easy i'm gonna play this as an example just so you guys can kind of get a sense of what i mean intro i'm gonna be going over some tips and tricks that you can and then i'll go over this one right here but if you guys enjoy the video and you want to see more like this so if that makes sense to you guys i would try to stick to something like that because it's really fast paced and allows for the viewers to kind of be engaged in watching the video itself once i've decided that this is good to go i'll just select all my footage by left clicking on the timeline and then what i'll do is i'll right click go to new compound clip and i'll press create which kind of merges the footage all together to make one big clip this makes it so that when you add an effect to the clip, it'll add it to all of them versus adding them to each one individually. It's really good if you want to add something like a shake, which I'm about to go over or a color correction or something along that nature. The next thing I'll do is I'll go to the very beginning right here and I will go into the fusion tab and this will actually work together with the fade in animation that I kind of showed at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click anywhere in this gray space. I'm going to press control space on my keyboard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up transform just like this. And I'm going to do the normal transform press add and i'm going to press shift on my keyboard while dragging this to actually add it to this line right here so it becomes a part of it the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to keyframe the size at the very beginning to five which you can't really see the difference what's that it makes that? but you can see it's super zoomed in and kind of to the point where i finish saying what's up guys it's josh what's up guys it is josh i'll change it to one which makes it the natural size of the video itself so we can see guys, it, it does a bit of a slow zoom What's out guys, right here and it looks Josh. really awkward but i'm going to be showing you how to correct this so we're going to go over to our spline we're going to press this little arrow thing right here we're going to click in the gray space press Control a we're going to press s to ease this and then you're going to kind of want to copy this graph that i show you how to do right here which makes it an eased 
um, zoom out. So What's up, guys? It is Josh. we can see that looks a lot up, cleaner than something that is the super linear version that we saw at the beginning. All right. And then the next effect that we're going to add is we're going to add a S underscore shake. And I'm just going to press add right here. And we're going to connect it to the effects thing the way that we did with the transform. This is a Sapphire plugin. So you'll need to install it actually into your DaVinci Resolve. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube that you guys can check out how to do that for 100% free. But you can also copy similar settings in the camera shake default setting in DaVinci Resolve. I just prefer to use S underscore shake because it tends to work a lot better with my intros. What I'll do is I'll change the amplitude to 0.1 and I'll change the frequency to something like 0.2. And this is something that we could adjust to kind of make it look a lot better as we go along. I'm going to change our playback resolution to quarter resolution. To do that, you just come up to playback timeline proximal go to quarter resolution. And if you look closely in this video right here, I'm going to make it up bigger so you guys can focus. And just by looking at this, we can see that it provides a simple movement appearance to the video itself. From there, I'll add normally a second transform because when you add a shake we can see that there is a bit of a reflection at the bottom at specific points we can see it like for example my hand looks extended here so i'm going to add a second transform and what i'm going to do with this transform is i'm just going to make it something like 1.1 which will slightly zoom in my video easily implement into your own and just like that we'll actually be finished with the effects on the clip itself from there what i'll do is i'll go into the color tab which will allow me to individually adjust the video if i think that it doesn't look the greatest if i want to increase the saturation for example you don't want to do too high normally for a video to make it a bit more colorful i'll change it from 50 to something like 55 which will just give me a slight color boost and there is a built-in color boost feature which kind of adjusts individual things instead of davinci resolve but it gives you the option to also adjust shadows saturation hue all that stuff so i just recommend playing around with that and seeing what you like best uh, but yeah that's pretty much the only thing i'll touch in terms of a color correction from there the only thing really to do is i will add my music different music that i recommend for your intros are some sort sort of lo-fi so i would recommend using channels like eric godlow beats he does really great lo-fi he's very diverse in terms of the lo-fi beats that he creates you can check out his library of that or you can use a free for profit beat by ross gossage he makes a lot of good instrumentals that you can put in the background of your videos those are the instrumentals that you'll hear in my intros all of the tutorials that i make including this tutorial itself so the beat in the background is actually from that channel so all i'll do is i'll go over to my music folder and i'll just drag in one of these beats right here and then i'll turn the volume down to something like negative 30 and i'll just cut it down to meet the uh, duration of the intro itself some tips and, tricks that you can easily and then lastly this is extremely optional you don't have to do this if you don't want to it just kind of depends on your budget or your access to resources i would get or purchase some sort of call to action button animation for your channel i got mine from impressions ggs but you can also use different ones such as creator set animations and i've used those in the past if you've seen those uh, pop-ups in my videos i'm just gonna drag in my youtube animation right here which i also have in all my videos and then i'll adjust the volume to make it not as loud but if you guys enjoy the video and you want to see more like this make sure to like comment subscribe and I but yeah that's pretty much it that's the basic effects that you can implement in your videos that i use in my own intros i hope you guys found this tutorial useful if you guys want to subscribe i highly encourage you to do so make sure to go leave me a comment down below as well as like the video i will have a playlist to other tutorials linked in the description if you want to check those out but i hope you guys did enjoy all links needed for this video will be in the description and i We'll see you guys in a future video. Peace out.